This is one of our few aerial shots in the Promised Land TV series. We had a need for aerial shots elsewhere in the episode, so as long as they were at it, as long as they had the helicopter, they just threw this one in, but normally you wouldn't need an, an aerial shot to establish a scene like this. Here you have uh, a, a business which is actually just down the road, a couple blocks from the ABC affiliate uh, headquarters in Salt Lake City. Of course, uh, Promised Land was on CBS, so we had no interaction with the ABC TV station, but this is right on 1700 South and uh, a road called Pioneer Road. So an actual uh, business. Hey, they threw in this aerial shot uh, as well to establish where the Green family happened to be. This is a little reservoir up uh, near the... It's kind of up the mountain a little ways from Hogel Zoo and down from the This Is The Place State Park in uh, Salt Lake City. Um, the aerial shot was shot on a completely different day than the rest of this scene that you're watching right now. Anyway, by the way, my name is Greg, and I worked on this episode of the Promised Land television series on CBS back in the 1990s. I worked on every episode, actually. This one we were shooting in September of 1996. And as a matter of fact, we were working on this very episode when our pilot episode aired for the first time as the season premiere of Touched by an Angel for that particular year. So when that happened, we had a premiere party for the cast and crew. They had, uh, it, it took place at about the same time that the episode was airing over the air, but we were watching a videotape, and we were up at, um, I don't know, uh, uh, Snowbird Lodge, I believe it was. I'm not sure, which is what, just one of the really big, nice rooms they had up there. So uh, that gave us a chance, those of us on the crew, to go watch the show together which we, we really never had an opportunity to do that formally, and uh, also to bring, you know, family uh, with us because we spend so much time not being with our families when we're working on a show like this. All right, so here's the Green family. And at this scene that you see here is actually inside uh, uh, one of the rooms at the Salt Lake Community College, so completely different from the outside of the building you just saw. And uh, this was the first scene we did for this particular episode. Um, we had run a little bit late the, the previous day's work. So uh, we weren't scheduled to start our work on this scene, on this episode, until the afternoon, just because the previous day's work had run so late. But then at the last minute, they, uh, they pulled the call time and, and, and scheduled it earlier and made some calls around, and I missed my call that told me when I was supposed to show up. So I happily waltzed in at the originally scheduled time, which was late. So I was late to work this day, very embarrassed. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we shot this scene and um, it, we, we ran late anyway because uh, we, we didn't really start till the afternoon. But there's our, our, our main guest star for this particular episode, Cloris Leachman. She's playing the part of uh, Claire's aunt, Ethel Mooster, but they, they refer to her as Auntie Mooster, just a kind of a, a, a silly name, Mooster, silly sound. I don't know if that's a real name. I'm sorry if I offended someone who <laughs> is really named Mooster, but um, they had a little fun with that name in this particular episode. And um, what you'll see here is, well, Cloris Leachman was actually 70 years old when they shot this scene, but she's playing the part of Auntie Mooster, who just turned 100. So um, they, I, I did think they did a fabulous job with the makeup and, and everything to, uh, to make her look like she was 100 years old. You know, it really aged her skin, put skin, you know, age spots all over and stuff. Now, here's uh, David Graff, our other uh, main guest star. And this is actually the interior of uh, the real building that you saw from the outside. Uh, that was shot days later. And, you know, they intercut here. So, um, all right. So here's another one of our main guest stars for this episode. Tom Amandis is the actor that you see standing there offering a toast. And uh, Tom actually got a chance to work with him uh, a few, several more times, uh, really. Uh, he was on uh, the Everwood program a few years after this was shot. And so he was a regular on Everwood, and I worked on several episodes of that. 
show. And then uh, also before Everwood was done, uh, another show, uh, a feature film that was shot in the Salt Lake City area was called uh, Bonneville. And Tom was in the, the show called Bonneville. I got to work with him on that a little bit as well. So, uh, you yeah, know, he's, he's, he's all over the place in my career. All right, so in this scene, they're, uh, they're offering a tribute to uh, Auntie Mooster on her 100th birthday, and she used to work at this company. And so this is just this big happy birthday party on behalf of the company, and the Green family has decided to, to go out and attend this party because uh, Auntie Mooster was uh, such a... Such a wonderful aunt for Claire growing up, and when times were tough, Auntie Mooster was always there for Claire, so very special reason for, for going to this party. But what they're establishing here is that uh, she got laid off from the company when she got too old years and years ago, and so she's making fun of them for laying her off, and here she is, 100 years old, having outlived all the people who fired her. All right, so, and uh, we don't know why uh, that actor, David Graff, was snooping around in the company, but he just barged in and ran through their party, disrupted things, and um, she recognizes, wait a minute, who is that guy? He's kind of a troublemaker that they, they were aware that something, something about that guy that uh, they crossed paths in the past. And... Uh, yeah, so so here in this scene, he's he's trying to escape from these people. We still don't know exactly why he was rummaging around through an office in there, why the security guards have uh, have come after him, and um, you know he just sees an opportunity to uh, hide somewhere, and oh, guess what? They've left the door unlocked on the Airstream trailer, and he's hidden out. So the episode is called The Hostage. And uh, at first you think that refers to um, this guy taking the Green family hostage. He's some, you know, ne'er-do-well criminal who, who they established already had a gun on him. Uh, but as the episode plays out, we see a little bit uh, more of a... There's a double meaning to that, uh, to that title, hostage. Okay. A lot of the crew members were kind of excited to have David Graff on the on the show because they recognized him from the Police Academy movies, this comedic actor. Uh, I have to say that I was not and still am not familiar with the Police Academy movies. So I didn't share that thrill of having David with us, but uh, I will tell you, he was, a, he was a nice guy. He was funny between takes, and here he was playing a very dramatic role. And um, a couple of years later, he played a very dramatic role in an episode of Touched by an Angel. I'll tell you about that in a moment. Because here we are at a historic house, and this is actually in Draper, Utah. So one of the rare occasions, I suppose, where we, we found, uh, or I should say they, our, uh, our fine locations department, <laughs> found a house that uh, fulfilled a lot of the needs for this episode, this, this one this one house. So it was a real historic home. I think it had a little you know, plaque on it. And it, uh, we were able to use the exterior of the, of the house and also all the shots we did on the inside of the house. We used the real interior of that real house and then there's some stuff out in a, in a field behind the house which was really out around there and uh, a barn behind the house. There's just a lot of you know, very so here we are. Yeah, here here's inside the house itself, and this this is you know a, a fairly uh, large room where you where you just saw uh, Russell Green and his mom, and uh, but but in a in a situation like this, even though this is you know a fairly large room for a house, it's a fairly small room to film a TV show <laughs> where you have you know a lot of actors, a lot of crew. Uh, nice that they had high ceilings. That's always helpful because, you know, you got the guy with the, with the boom microphone. Flash. Flash was uh, what we called him. Uh, and, you know, a lot of headroom there for him. But, uh, you know, to have uh, the crew coming in and out of the room, you know, clear out when the cameras are rolling and go back in when they're not. And, you know, it's kind of it's a little cramped in there. But uh, and, then, and then this, of course, is... Uh, not even at the same place. This is our Airstream trailer interior set 
back at our headquarters, uh, which was a converted warehouse uh, several miles away from where the uh, house exterior was. I, they, they do such a great job of uh, cutting back and forth that it, it, the, all these years later, it even fools me that as I see this scene inside the, the trailer, I'm imagining in my head that it really is parked in the driveway of that historic home in Draper. But it's, you know, this is, this is the set that we made. All right, so Nathaniel... In this scene, he's the perfect kid to run into a scary person and not really be scared of him and ask the direct questions. Hey, what are you, what are you up to? What are you? And, and, and we will see in a moment that Nathaniel actually becomes sympathetic to this guy's cause because it sounds like conspiratorial stuff that he's uh, worried about. And so Nathaniel, of course, he thinks his uh, father is being, you know, kidnapped by the CIA or whatever he thinks. So, of course, Nathaniel's going to believe these uh, maybe you would think wild stories about some sort of conspiracy having to do with David Graff's character and his wife, who he says, uh, you know, was killed by, by someone. We'll, we'll find out what's going on uh, later there. This, her, her, okay, back inside the real house, again, in Draper, and I will tell you that this room, it was a little bit disorienting to be in this room. And the reason for that is, I think the foundation of the house had settled over the centuries. Well, over <laughs> over the decades. <laughs> I think the house was about 100 years old. Um, and so the one uh, part of the room closer to the front window uh, of the home uh, seemed to be a little bit lower. The, you know, the floor actually sloped a little bit as you got towards the, the, the front wall of the house. And it's strange because uh, you you wouldn't think that uh, just having a little bit of a sloped floor would, would make you disoriented. But for me, it almost made me dizzy just being in the room. Uh, strange. I've, I've never quite had that experience anywhere else. But, uh, <laughs> that, yeah, like a, like some sort of amusement park ride, you know, the, 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 the room with the sloped floor. Okay, so here Nathaniel is explaining to uh, David Graff's character, um, you know, that there's something fishy about uh, his dad's background. And, uh, you know, this is where they kind of hit it off a little bit as uh, kindred spirits who are both uh, dealing with bigger issues. And, whoa, uh oh, okay. Uh, Russell sees some stranger in their airstream and says, Nathaniel, you, 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 yeah, let's just uh, get out of here. And uh, uh oh, it's, it's looking really, really tense. And uh, Nathaniel is trying to explain that, uh, you know, there, there's some sort of uh, reason to be sympathetic. And here uh, the character, uh, Kyle is his name, is, is explaining that, uh, no, 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 there's nobody on his side. You can't go to the authorities here. They're just going to haul him in. and This is one of those moments where you get to see just what a, what a tough character Russell Green is. There's, here's that, uh, that tough Navy SEAL, no-nonsense part of Russell Green is, uh, about, to, uh, is about to emerge. Uh, okay, and, and we're you know, juxtaposing this against uh, these moments where uh, the, the rest of the Green family is getting to know a little bit more about the, uh, the colorful, colorful character, old Auntie Mooster, with her uh, amazing history. And oh, Hattie sees that, well, you know, Mooster's kind of, she's so particular about things, he's just kind of very difficult to, uh, to deal with. And they're going to warn her that, wait a minute, that's Mooster's chair, no one's supposed to sit in, in the chair. And Grandma's reaction is... Yeah, whatever. Okay, so, okay, here's here's one of the climactic, tense action moments of the episode. As the family sees Russell being led into the room by some ne'er-do-well, and everyone's looking tense and scared. And, uh-oh, uh, okay, just when you think that uh, uh yeah there you go there's russell green tough navy seal guy taking control of the situation and uh disaster averted and uh 
Mooster having a very comical reaction to this, just n not at all phased by it, saying, hey, if you're going to be roughhousing, go outside. And having something snappy to say to, uh, to Hattie at the time. Okay.